And basically what I'm talking about, so if you're new to my talks or if you wonder what the hell is this crazy woman talking about, what I'm actually talking about is a pointing back to a freedom that's always present. And I talk about psychology and I talk about philosophy and all different things, but basically the objective of these talks is to, to, to remind or to point to that which is beyond anything we think, feel, or anything that goes into time. And you, you can't even say it's beyond, it's almost like dead in the centre of everything. And so in the world of form, life is crazy because it's always changing. Life is change, one thing to another, to another, to another. And so for the human that believes it is a body-mind and it is something fixed, life can be really challenging because you're trying to stay as a fixed, solid person when that's not the reality. You as a person is always changing. The illusory you as a person is always changing. The body's always changing. The environment's always changing. Life is always in change. But there's something that never changes. And this is home and this is freedom. And that was never really meant to be forgotten about. But it just got veiled by humans' incessant thinking and the belief that who they, tr who they are is something that's found in thought. So who you might think you are is a description of yourself. So a happy person, a sad person, a funny person, somebody that's beautiful or ugly or fat or thin or rich or poor, somebody that's done things, somebody that's argued, somebody that's guilty, somebody that's innocent. So you might have all these different ideas of who you are, when in reality that's simply a description of the body-mind mechanism. It's not actually a description of who you truly are. But the who you truly are part is what's been forgotten. The person solely thinks that they're that person moving in time and that they are a description in time. But there's so much more to you. You're so vast and huge and there's an element to you that's free. And this subject, unfortunately, or fortunately, isn't going to fix your life. So if you need to fix your mountain bike or if you need to get a new job, or if you go broke, non-duality isn't going to fix that. Non-duality is talking about a peace and a freedom that is in all of that. It's not going to wipe you of conditioning. It's impossible to be an unconditioned human body, but it's going to show you a freedom in that conditioning, in the middle of it. It will more than likely even out the conditioning to an extent and make the conditioning more obvious. Um, and the conditioning flow easier, but you're never going to uncondition who, your particular dynamics. Normally in spirituality, there's so much focus on reconditioning yourself and becoming perfect or unconditioned. And that happens to an extent with non-duality, and I do talk about dynamics and behavior dynamics. I think there's an element to that, but ultimately that's not the goal. The goal is finding a freedom that's beyond all of it. So what is the freedom? Let me try and describe that now. The freedom is this instance, is that which is looking and experiencing itself. And that which is looking and experiencing itself isn't separate from all things that are appearing. It's right here, right now, who you truly are. It's totally empty of a thing, totally innocent, and simultaneously it is all things. So your thoughts pop up and say, what are you talking about? How do I understand it? But when those thoughts stop or they pop up without any meaning, it's seen that actually the inside and the outside world don't actually exist. There is only life happening and that life isn't actually happening to someone. Life is one energy experiencing itself and that someone is appearing and disappearing in that one energy. That separate person who you believe yourself to be isn't the experiencer. The experiencer is totally empty and that's why it's free and it's totally full and that's why it's love. It's so beautiful. And then eventually there becomes this awakening where it's seen 
so clearly that who you are is a boundless freedom beyond form. And then that the person carries on, but the person is different. So the person, the character carries on, but it's different. It's no, it's no longer the experiencer. But there is a merging of that. So there is this waking up to the freedom. And then there is this person, this character that appears. But the character is no longer the experiencer. The character still appears. And that realization and that integration into the character is an endless process that always can get deeper. But the realization, who you are is boundlessness, is always instantaneous can never be anything but instantaneous. The person actually can't realize it, but that realization can affect and change the person. But the goal isn't coming to a perfect person. The goal on the per personal level is to be open to that change, open to that growth open to what life is bringing. I don't want you to project on that Lisa has got her life sorted and lives this perfect design, divine life and never has problems. That's not the case. Lisa still is open to working on conditioning and working on relationships and um, working on how you live this, how you live this and how you speak about this as well. So recently somebody was asking me in an online talk that I did yesterday, someone was asking me how to stay in presence while dealing with some a, a fa close family member that was violent. And so I can point things out about that, but I'm not all knowing on the personal dynamic levels. That's still something that we can all of us learn more about and grow in, of understanding how humans work and the conditioning of humans and how we can live as a more peaceful society. But I don't want that to be the projection onto this instrument that I know all these things. I can be a pointing and that pointing can help there be a deeper exploration. But on that's that's not really that's not my expertise. My expertise is pointing to a freedom that's here. But sometimes the person needs to be talked about and the seeking dynamics need to be talked about. But I just want to try to explain these things very clearly. Because I'm aware now from being a teacher for so many years that um, the projection onto the teacher gets so big in the mind that you put onto the teacher that there's some sort of God that has this perfect life and then you compare yourself below them as something up there. And that's not true either. That's just what your mind's doing with everything. The mind, depending on your state of mind and your seeking energy, your mind will always be looking to validate what it feels in that moment. So if it's feeling like a lower energy and not enough or feeling lost, then it will look for something above it to lead it or to validate that it's not enough. So those sorts of dynamics come from the mind. They're not a reality. They're not true. 